Okay. Yes. Yes, yes, doctor. Thank you. Um, namaste and good evening to Dr. Shantala Hegde, the source person of this evening. This is Nisha and Jyoti from Dimans who are providing online and offline support for conducting the webinar. The enthusiastic and inquisitive viewers, music lovers, participants from across the country. I have great pleasure in welcoming you to yet another edition of this webinar being organized by Vayamana for Sanjeevini, an outreach arm of the Geriatrics Department of Demands, Bangalore. I am happy to welcome and introduce Dr. Shantala Hegde, resource person of this evening. She is a well-known musician. She, she concentrates in the field of research to find ways to improve healing of patients through music. As regards her educational background, after obtaining her postgraduate degree in psychology from Bangalore University in the year 2001, she joined Enhance for MPhil for her second post-graduation and has specialized in the field of neuropsychology. She pursued her PhD program in clinical psychology with specialization in neuropsychology and became a doctor in the subject in the year 2008. Her research interest in clinical neuropsychology and neuropsychological rehabilitation. She has interest in clinical neuropsychology and neuropsychological rehabilitation. She has worked towards developing home-based and hospital-based cognitive remediation programs for patients with schizophrenia. Her specific focus is in music perception and cognition and the application of music-based intervention in neuropsychological rehabilitation. Dr. Hegde has established and currently heads the Music Cognition Laboratory at Nimhans, the first of its kind in India. Besides, she is an additional professor and consultant at the Neuropsychology Unit, Department of Clinical Psychology, Nimhans. She is trained in neuro, neuro, neurological music therapy from the International Academy of Neurology, music, neuro, Neurology Music Therapy. She is one of the first affiliate professional members in the Academy of Neurology Music, music Therapy from India. She has many fellowships and awards to her credit. She has received an International Young Investigator Award that was instituted by the International Congress on Sishophonia research in 2009. She is now a global ambassador in Carnatic music. She is, see, in fact, I am not giving full biodata of her. She has got so many things to her critics. So I think I can go and on and on and on. But she, I mean, it's a very eminent doctor. That's what I wanted to mention. She is a musician, vocalist trained in the Hindustani classical yeah. music tradition. She has composed and sung for music CD named Umar Sahasram. She continues to learn under the tutelage of Vidushna yeah. Srimadhi Bharati Pratap. Uh, we are, in fact, but in, in, in this program, we are really fortunate to have with us Dr. Rajam Shankar also, who is an equally accomplished person, who is an equally accomplished person, in, uh, and she is also a music therapist. She treats patients through music. music. Therefore, I am very, very happy to invite her, I mean, to welcome her also into this seminar. Thank you. And Dr. Kedme, Madam, as for ourselves, we are a set of people who are keen in developing our knowledge in diverse fields of medicine and health-related matters from experts in the field. We thank you for sparing your valuable time and using it to share, it, share with us your knowledge in the matter of healing through music. As a meeting hygiene, I request all the participants to raise their question, if any, in the chat box. I request the research person to respond to them after the presentation is over. Hegde, madam, kindly go ahead with your pilot, with your presentation. Let me not stand between you and the audience. Kindly go ahead, madam. Thank you, sir. I'm truly humbled uh, with all the seniors here and uh, especially to Rajam, madam. <clears throat> uh, thank you so much. It's truly humbling to be amidst all the uh, elders here and get your uh, blessings. Uh, I'll try to share my slides. I have prepared. Please, ma, please, please, um, please go ahead. Technically. Please go ahead.
I'm not sure if you're able to see my... Uh... Your screen is not a sharp one. Huh? You have to go to the screen sharing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my Apple, some new Mac, some issues. So if... I have already made you co-host. <laughs> okay. So you can definitely share your screen. Yeah. In the meanwhile, if Dajam, Dr. Dajam Shankar wants to share something, she can say that. She has done some work on this. Recently, she has done some work. Is uh, uh, one second. One second. Please, please go. Ah, uh, yeah. This is happening. I'll do one thing, and then I'll do one thing. Looks like there is some issue, sir, with my settings, okay. because there was some issue with the settings. So let me then speak without the slides, or if I could uh, mail you the slides, if you can show it okay. also. That's no problem at all. I can speak without the slides as well. Okay, you come. You are, you are. Uh, yeah. So thank you for the uh, kind introduction. And it's uh, truly humbling to be part of this meeting and to talk about uh, music and uh, you know, wedding. So the point that I wanted to make is uh, now, of course, the buzzword is the population. The number of elders in the country worldwide is increasing. We all know the number of people in that geriatric population, so to say. It's not like, you know, we have to have stigma when we are elders. We are all aging. I, we keep saying this word, Sadhyo Jata. We, keep born, we are born every second and we are aged every second as well. So I would like to please, uh, whenever I use the word geriatric or elderly, it's not to kind of... Um, you know, in a way, put down the population which have had so much of experience, life experiences, and so on and so forth. But we do know that when we talk about elderly population, comes along with it a lot of challenges, health-related issues. So that as medical professionals, as uh, mental health professionals, our main concern is how do we keep this well-being um, intact till we uh, reach the deathbed or till we say this goodbye to this life. So the well-being is one key important. And uh, whenever we talk about elderly population, which is such a major concern in the, in, in the field of health, uh, mental health, the reason being burden. Whenever somebody is not well, we know how much it takes uh, toll on the self as well as the caregivers, the family, and the overall society as well. That's what uh, whenever we talk about any illness, yeah. or injuries or neurological conditions, psychiatric conditions or any other health conditions, organizations like WHO or other uh, major organizations dedicated for specific health conditions talk about burden. How do we reduce this burden? Or how do we enhance uh, you know, the uh, well-being of the individuals as much as possible? Now, the whenever we talk about elderly, majorly things that we discuss is uh, uh, cognition. Uh, you know, health is one, physical health is one. We are not as energetic as we used to be or we are not, uh, you know, maybe uh, in a gainful employment. But that doesn't mean, I'm sure many of you are so enthusiastic to participate on a weekday afternoon like this. I'm sure you're all keeping yourself so active. May not be in a gainful employment because, yes, there are limitations when it comes to the rules and regulations of the society as part of it. But as a mental health professional, whenever we talk about health, what we highlight and underline is there is no health without mental health. So if you're keeping yourself fit, if you're keeping your mind active, if you're keeping yourself physically active to the extent possible, 
if the concomitant outcome of that is uh, overall well-being. When we talk about well-being, the other word that is often used is in the field, you might be reading this often these days in newspapers is positive mental health, positive mental health. You know, it become the buzzword. Truly speaking, it is not alien to Indians. The ones who follow uh, our rituals, routine, we what we have learned through our culture, socio-cultural upbringing. For us, positive mental health is something that is so obvious yet from a psychology, Western psychology textbooks point of view, when you know we are, we are given wine in a new bottle, <laughs> we feel that, okay, some new terms have been given. What do we mean by uh, positive mental health or well-being? That's the theme I was asked to speak on for today. Whenever we say positive mental health or mental health in general or well-being, it does not mean just absence of illness. So just absence of health, illness doesn't mean we are mentally health or we are talking about positive mental health. We are going beyond that. What does that mean? We are talking about um, physical health. We are talking about cognitive health. We are talking about emotional health. We are talking about spiritual health. So there are so many dimensions to this aspect of positive mental health or mental well-being. Let's take simple example of ourselves. We may have we may not have any physical health as of today, but we we may be you know disturbed with some uh, you know uh, family issues or maybe interpersonal issues or we may be uh, worried about uh, lack of meaning in life, uh, searching for meaning in life. Some of us may have some spiritual path which gives us meaning. We say, okay, this this is our goal in life, and that engulfs our entire being so that we are able. To, it's like cushion. For anything that comes, we are able to take forward and move forward in life. Now, when we are talking about uh, well-being, especially in elderly and in this group, which is talking about healthy aging, aging healthy and healthy aging. Um, as I said, aging is on a continuum. Even I am aging. All of you are just a little ahead, maybe, but we are all on the same continuum. Second thing is, we are not talking about mental disorders today. I am not touching on mental illness. No. Third point is we are focusing on mental well-being, which means we are not we are going beyond illness. We are talking about positive mental health. Keeping this prelude or this background, where does music fit in? We all know music is such an exquisite art form. We all listen to music. Music is part of our life. Anything from early morning, if you think of your own daily activities that you are indulged in, maybe you get up, first thing is your phone alarm. You might have kept a, your favorite song as an alarm instead of just that buzz sound. Or you may go for a walk. You may listen to Sahasranama, Vishnu Sahasranama, or shlokas or music, your playlist. Then you come home, the TV is on, then you have music. So you think of anything, music permeates our lives and it is there. So in some sense today, what I might highlight uh, would be something just reflecting like a mirror what you already know, but add on some scientific jargons and scientific uh, component to it. So where does music fit in when we talk about well-being is the question. For a long time, we know that music is important. One, it is such an exquisite art form. Thirdly, it gives us emotion. Uh, you know, people indulge in music because it's so it moves us. Emotion is the first thing that catches when we talk about music. All of you, if you ask, why do you listen to music? It makes me feel relaxed. It makes my mood better or I feel happy or when I'm sad, it helps me cry or some songs move us so much. There is no sadness, but it brings tears in our eyes. It could be a spiritual connection. So these are shades of emotion that music draws us to. In fact, that is the reason why music industry is one of the billion dollar industry. In, in the whole world and we humans indulge in music so much whether you're trained in music formally or you may not have been trained in music formally so as scientists as mental health professionals and uh, to briefly talk about how my interest in this research on music and brain music and psychology came into picture I will try to interview uh, uh, interview that along with what I'm going to speak so first thing is these we are, we are clear of that we are talking about mental well-being, which includes all these aspects, emotion, spiritual aspect, empathy, 
uh, our physical, cognitive health, brain health, all this is important for us to be fit, for us to feel fine. Now, we are saying music is such an important part of our life. It is a very universal behavior. From babies, lullabies that we sing, or even when the mothers are carrying the baby in their, uh, in their womb, we are talking about Garbha Samskara. Then we are talking about, uh, you know, music even in the elderly population. So, which means it is cutting across the entire lifespan. And in that sense, uh, musical behavior is so, so universal. Is it just for emotion regulation is the question. Or is it just for our uh, entertainment? So, in one of my slides, actually I had put that music is definitely beyond entertainment. We are not talking music as just aha factor, feel good factor, let's listen to music, just relax. Yes, undoubtedly that's one of the important points, but music has a role to play beyond that is the take-home message for today. How is it? One, when first question we should ask is what is music? So we may argue on this, music comes from the physics point of view, is it sound? Is it just uh, complex sounds? Uh, but we know that music, which is a universal language, we call it as a language, we know there is such hierarchical structure to it. It has uh, swaras, it has tala, it has laya, then it has melody. In Indian system, we talk about raga. And then in raga, we have so many other uh, grammar to it. So it is almost like a complex language, so to say. So one emotion that it plays, whether we know music theoretically or not, it moves us. Second is music inherently such a complex structure like a language that for a for a neuroscientist when we talk about from the brain point of view it is such a rich uh, stimul stimulus that we talk about that can be used in keeping our brain fit in our mind fit now how do we go about doing it so, uh, Jambunathan sir had told me give me give us some practical tips also as you go along I will try to do my best so first is we said, what is music? It is not just mere sound unfolding in time. It is just not, we, noise is not music. We know that. Some random sound that comes is not music. Me tapping on the table for a, some time may sound like rhythm, but just that alone will not make music. So music is like language. So just a, u, ma, or swaras or vyanjanas will not make language. We know that combination of those swaras, those vyanjanas, and then the words, then the sentences, and then the syntactical meaning, then cultural meaning. We have our own proverbs, idioms. So same way with music as well. So music is a very complex structure if you think of it that way. The only thing what we do is sometimes, which is very known, in Kannada there is a proverb, Hitla gida maddala. So something that is so obvious, that is so uh, in front of us, we don't appreciate the complexity of it or the or the weight of it. So, as a brain scientist, as a neuropsychologist, our interest is if music is such a universal behavior, if it is such an important part of our from childhood to elderly till our you know uh, end end point, if we were to call, then. It must be playing such an important role beyond entertainment. How is it possible? So if we, uh, Rajam Madam will know if she's a music teacher also. So when you're teaching music, you'll start very stepwise. You learn the swaras first, then you learn the sarle verse, janti verse, then you go to compositions, then we learn. So it's a very structured way of training. Musical training engages a lot of brain areas. Why? One, as we say, it engages attention. You need to pay attention to the, the sound that you hear, the music that you hear. Then while learning something new, you have to you have to put a lot of conscious effort to it, not what you call as an automatic process. Thirdly, in music, it has lyrics. It has then compositions, then complex rhythm patterns, especially in Indian music, if you talk about all this, at the brain level, what is happening? There is no one music center in the brain. Just like in language, we have no, multiple no, no, no. music centers in the brain. So if I break it down, if I break what we think, let's take a song, okay? If we break it down into multiple components, then we are saying that different areas of the brain is engaged for processing those. Like pitch, 
we hear the sound through our ear or any sound goes through our ear, ear it has a pathway, specific pathway in our brain which reaches the primary auditory area. Then it goes to the secondary auditory area. Then we decide, oh, this is noise. Oh, this is music. Then in music, we'll decipher and say, oh, this is instrumental music. This is vocal music. And then we decipher, oh, this is so-and-so singing. Maybe we, if we are knowledgeable, theoretically, we'll say this raga. Or we just, without knowledge, we might just enjoy it as, as it is unfolding, the music itself. But imagine at the brain level, it has actually processed it at a minute level. It has processed the pitch. It has processed the rhythm. It has processed the emotion. It has processed our motor area because we are tapping. Any song, whether you are uh, formally trained or not, any groovy music will start tapping to the music. Or, you know, we'll start uh, uh, nodding our head to the music or our legs will start tapping to it. So there is a very strong entire brain engagement when we are listening to music or when we engage with music. So I would like to um, share this as a take-home message that we are not seeing music as just a form of entertainment. So when you listen to music every day at home or if you are learning music or if you have learned music and if you have stopped somewhere, I would urge all of you, there is no age limit for learning something new. Even today, you can go back and say, let me start learning a song. Let me start learning a shloka. Let me start learning something. Why? Because learning engages, as I'm telling, engages multiple areas of your brain. Beyond just reading a book or you might say playing a sport game also might engage our brain. Indeed, any activity that we play or any activity that we engage in, our brain has this ability. What we call as uh, true nature or a very uh, veritable nature of the human brain is neural plasticity. Many of you may have heard this term. It's become very widely used now. What does that mean? That the brain has this capability to malleate, malleable. That means you keep it active, it will remain active. If you don't use it, then it kind of says, okay, I've not used this, then I forget. So just to give a simple example, Many of you may have friends for 40 years. You may have childhood friends who you are still in touch with. How are you so close? Maybe because you, go, you go and meet them often or you call them once in a while and then ask about, one. you know, how are you doing? How are things? You share your personal stories with each other. You are in touch with each other. That is how your relationship is so strong for so many years. Same thing is happening with the brain. Let's assume that different parts of the brain, let's not use the technical terms. Uh, uh, let's leave it to the scientists, the medical professionals to use the technical terms. Assume that there are different areas of the brain, but they have to talk to each other to process something. When engaging with music, what we are doing is helping the brain to communicate with each other at different levels. We call it as the cortical higher brain areas the lower brain areas. We, so as I said, emotion, reward. When we listen to music, we have goosebumps, you know, like uh, shiver down the spine feeling. Uh, motor, like tapping to the rhythm. So motor engagement, um, recollecting of lyrics of the song. Uh, that means memory pathway that we talk about. Or just a feel-good factor, what we spoke about the emotion. There are emotion centers in the brain dedicated for that, for that. So basically you are helping communication about these different areas of the brain to be active. Like you are light, switching on the light bulb, you know, like that. So basically keeping different areas of the brain, like friends, be in touch with them. So the another take home message or a theme for all of you is use it or lose it. So if you don't use it, if you don't use some skills, you lose it over time. We all know that. If we don't remember a story for a long time, we tend to forget it. If we don't uh, recollect a song for a long time, you will have vague memory. Then over time, we forget. The nature, of course, uh, I say this neural plasticity is true till, till we die. New neurons, new connections can happen. We can make new friends. It is just that we say childhood friendship is different than later friendships that we make. Why? Because that time that you have spent together, the experiences that you have spent together, the 
the the strength of the connection basically same thing is with the brain if you have learned something in childhood that is much much longer much stronger no doubt when we are elderly if we have to learn a song we might have to learn it 20 times more whereas a child might pick it up in one time there is there is a difference because we talk about critical brain development period the ability to assimilate new information to memorize things is quite different in a younger brain versus a elderly brain that we have to accept but that doesn't mean that we cannot learn something new that we cannot engage and uh, you know learn keep our brain fit so one is keeping our brain fit so if you are if you have learned music and if you have left it please get back to music or any form of music actively engaging is definitely better than just passive listening but passive listening is equally good. If some of you may feel, no, no, I'm bathroom singer. I'm not good with singing. I'm shy. I say, okay, uh, passive listening is also equally good because nevertheless, it engages all these brain areas. Second thing is emotion regulation is important part of mental well-being or positive mental health. What do we mean by uh, emotion regulation? It is not just saying, I, uh, you know, I will not express my sadness. It is not just saying I will not uh, express too much of joy. Like always talking about balance. Sometimes it is important to share our uh, pain to, with others, but regulate it, that it should not overwhelm you and bother you and should not affect your health. Especially in elder, elderly population, the major issues is emptiness, that you feel lonely or loss of a spouse, you are alone uh, or comradeship, not having many friends around or social connection. So emotions may seem like a bit, you know, uh, overwhelming sometimes. But we also say as we age, as we mature, we are much more experienced in handling stress in life. So this emotion regulation is not just about um, not expressing our emotion. So we should not see that holding, keeping it all inside, bottling it up is good. Definitely not. Expressing it in the right way, balancing it is very, very important. In what way music will help then for emotion regulation? We know, especially if you take Indian music, we talk about rasas, raga, raga, bringing about different shades of emotion. But many of you may be familiar with uh, Bollywood music, film music. Many may like Rafi music, old film songs. But you will have your favorite playlist. If you look back carefully, each of your playlist is like your own personal story, your life story. Some songs are so dear to you because they are so strongly connected with some emotions, some life events, something that you have experienced. So having your favorite uh, playlist might be very, very helpful in sometimes letting go of our emotions and balancing our emotion. Now, Again, when we talk about music from the neuroscience brain point of view, how we see emotion regulation is all these different emotions that we experience in music is true in real life. People say that, oh, if you're listening it in music, why should, because in music we enjoy sadness, whereas in real life we don't want sadness. In music we like melancholy, we like Gambira Rasa Ragas or Ragas that will bring out longing or that Ardrate that we say in Kannada, that, you know, longing feeling. But whereas in real life, we, we don't want that. But in music, we want it. Why is that? So why, how those, let the researchers take care. The take-home message for us is engaging with music and experiencing these different shades of emotion helps us to prepare our brain in a real life situation. It's almost like you're listening to a sad song your emotion is so peaked in terms of empathy that you are experiencing sadness that another person is experiencing. That is empathy. Having good empathy skills helps us in maintaining our mental well-being. Someone who cannot show empathy is someone who finds it very hard to kind of process their own emotions is what uh, you know we feel. And especially mental health professionals, we we stress a lot on this aspect of empathy. Empathy is putting ourselves in another person's shoes and experiencing that emotion and helping that. And music can be one of the very powerful method of 
engaging our different emotion, bringing out those emotion, having that as a exercise for our own brain, activating the emotion centers of our brain. So it's like you're giving uh, good food to your good health, good diet. Same way, listening to good music is like good diet to your brain. In fact, there is a very famous scientific article published in one of the top journals by my mentor. The title is Music Food for Neuroscience. So that is the, you know, like how good food, you also have good music that can enhance your well-being, emotion regulation. Thirdly, I mentioned in well-being is also spiritual health. And I can't uh, stress any, you know, like... Um, beyond this point how our Indian music or Indian tradition is, stresses so much on spirituality and spiritual like music is considered like yoga Nada yoga it's the term has been used I'll not touch upon the therapy part Raga Chikitsa or all of that because then it goes into a different uh, path altogether that's not the scope of today's uh, lecture or talk but let's only focus on the spiritual health in fact, WHO stresses on spiritual health as much important as mental health. It talks about um, spiritual health. What do we mean by spiritual health? We, of course, Indians, we, uh, as I said, it's like Ittal Gida. We have spirituality in every aspect of our uh, routine, um, you know, upbringing, our culture, our socio-cultural activities that you think of. It's in interwoven. But if how music can play a role uh, in our Indian traditional system we say one of the ways in which our Indian classical music emerged was through Vedas, Vedic traditions the Sama Veda later on it branched out to the two traditions Hindustani, Carnatic music if you look into carefully the compositions there as well has a lot of Bhakti component in it the Bhakti Rasa, Bhakti means what the love or affection or experiencing of these emotions. So it's all like interrelated. We spoke of the brain health. We talk about cognition. We talk about emotion. Now you're touching on spiritual aspect. But spirituality, the how music connects to it is through the bhakti aspect of it. Basically helping us uh, experience life beyond what we kind of understand in the realm of mundane things. Going beyond that. So for a musician... As a student of music, I always feel music or engaging with music actively or passively is a spiritual experience because you forget the sense of self. For that moment, you're experiencing something beyond yourself and maybe connecting to a higher spiritual uh, being. So in cultures, in uh, studies done on people uh, in elderly population where they have good health, mental health, physical health, these are some of the aspects. Spiritual health, uh, physical uh, well-being and social well-being. That is also an important part of uh, uh, well-being. Now, how does music connect to social well-being, social interaction? I started off saying that music is beyond entertainment. But it's also true that music is not just a solitary engagement. We may listen to our playlist sitting at home while doing other work or we may sing for ourselves or play an instrument for ourselves. But music is also a, a social uh, social engagement. We sing together or we go to a concert together. We meet like-minded people in a concert uh, like Rasikas coming together or it's a, it's a platform for us to go and interact with like-minded people and the discussions for, that follows me after that. So from a science, neuroscience point of view, Engaging in music in all these aspects of emotion regulation, of social uh, engagement, of spiritual experiencing of that aha experience or beyond the self, leaving all this listening to music, actively engaging in music, releases a lot of neurotransmitters, brings about changes in the brain, both structurally and functionally. That means uh, if you think of, again, going to the same example of friendship that I said, connecting people, connecting, you know, how friendships are formed. Same thing with the brain. Wiring of the brain changes. Both, which is visible through our newer methods like imaging, neuroimaging methods that we do scientifically or functionally also. 
functionally means how well the brain functions how does it how how is the output of that brain now in terms of cognitive health we say how actively and passively engaging in music enhances your neurocognitive function your quickness motor speed inhibition response inhibition ability to pay attention long uh, you know these are the things that fail as we age memory long term memory so studies that have been done with patients who have had mild cognitive impairment they are not people who have dementia but mild cognitive impairment listening to their own favorite songs their own um, uh, you know songs that they would have learnt in childhood or uh, close to their heart listening to those actually brings about a lot of autobiographical memory recollections we call that as reminiscence therapy which helps even if you can do it like your own experiment after a long time now after this lecture go back and listen to some song which you may not have heard for a long time just think of it you might say oh this i had heard during my college days these were my experiences this was what happened at that point in time this is whom i met and this is the first time i heard this song in a gramophone you have so many memories attached to a given song or a musical excerpt so just to recapitulate what i mentioned just now one is cognitive health emotional health spiritual health all these are key components of yeah. your overall well being and music can play a very very important role beyond just giving us a feeling of joy feeling of relaxing just you know as a relaxing uh, exercise now i also touched upon saying how uh, music from indian traditions we talk about it as a very spiritual pursuit like yoga so when we listen to music uh, we we connect to a let's say higher spiritual self or a, like a, a, a guru or a, a we call god you may call an a supreme power whatever the term that we may call what is important is that at half an hour of listening or one hour of listening that you do that whether you like it or not will have an impact on your brain because coming back to this aspect of neural plasticity so people who meditate people who engage with music people who do physical activity keep themselves active are the ones who ha are known to have better these neural connections better neural pathways and strong connections which basically means you are cognitively very very healthy emotionally also healthy spiritually healthy if these three components are taken care i think that's where we are talking about well being uh, so to say now coming to another uh, aspect of uh, you know um, this especially post pandemic this covid pandemic i think brought a lot of uh, issues on stress psychological stress and it's not that we elderly people or you know are immune to stress so it is not a stigma it is not that just because we are elders we should always be fine uh you know in front of the young younger generation we should show the path you know this some uh, things that are there i think we should shed that and accept that we are just in that journey we still can learn i always tell this there is no age limit for learning something new from starting from today now uh going back to some tips as jambunathan sir asked me to say uh from an uh like from this brain health cognitive health point of view what we talk about to enhance your neural plasticity that means how to keep our brain fit is something that you have to keep repeatedly doing something like exercise you go to a gym you not build muscle in one day you have to keep repeatedly doing some of these activities over time and then increase the uh, the complexity of the task over time that is important so let's take music for example many of you uh, may say i have not learned music formally that is okay but if you can learn some new songs that can be done you don't have to be a professional singer so i would say you can keep some target uh, in one uh, one month let me list, learn some three songs and just pay attention active listening is what i call not just passive listening it's not like i keep the song on and i go and do some other um, some other routine activity then your brain is not actually actively listening to music so if you want to use music as one of the 
key exercise to enhance your well-being, I would also say active listening is important. Then second, as I have been already said some two, three times, learn something. It could be just uh, singing a song in pitch, keeping, now you have smartphones, you can have your uh, Shruti uh, tuning or whatever. You can always uh, keep some goals that I can learn something new, which is a very, very good exercise. Just like going for walking or, you know, going for uh, other, like yoga or, other exercises that you may want to do to keep yourself fit. The important part, if I want to highlight, is that music is such a core um, biological phenomenon. That's what we keep saying in our field, in field of neuroscience, that music is a very, very hardcore biological-based uh, process. Why? Because music has not emerged just 5,000 6,000, even if we take our own tradition, we will date it back to Vedas to 6,000, 7,000 years. But there are evidences today that humans engaged with music, even uh, created instruments 40,000, 50,000 years ago. Pre-modern humans had music in them, which means music has been passed on from generation to generation to generation. It is not that uh, only musicians have survived. If you think of it from an evolutionary point of view, only it's not like musicians have survived. But music, aspects of music, whether you are aware of it or not, is part of our language, is part of our activity, daily activities, is part of everything that we do. To give us another small example, we say in Indian tradition, uh, Shruti Mata Layapita. Okay, and then we say music is like a language. You know, in the brain, uh, there are shared substrates. That means shared areas of the brain for language processing and music processing. Sometimes we see patients who, let's say, who have had stroke or other neurological conditions who, who lose ability to speak or language functions. We help them through, you know, music, musical form. It's not that we teach them music. No, it is not a music education program or a music training program. We just take components of music, help them to, let's say, say a sentence in a sing-song manner or speak in a sing-song manner or learn some basic rhythm. Rhythm, like, you know, when we, how we walk, how we talk, there is rhythm in it. So I'm trying to break it down for you to appreciate that don't see music as just one, one, uh, you know, like one, one holistic thing. But think of music as a, as a breaking it down into various components, how important it is in our life and how it can play a very important role in our uh, daily activities. Okay. So when you're walking, for example, if most of you may go for a walk, try to put some music which has rhythm in it and try to catch up with that, keep up with the beat. The reason is your motor area is engaged when you do that. It is not just tapping your hand or something. In, you know, in traditions, we learn that, right? But the fact that what we call as entrainment, so rhythmic entrainment happens, you are giving your exercise to the brain already. So just small change in your daily activity, a a adding a component of music with the knowledge why I am doing it can bring about a change. So uh, don't do it this as, I'm not teaching this as therapy. I'm not saying this as music therapy. No, I'm just saying how you just need to pay attention to something that is so obvious. You may not have seen it from that angle. That is all I'm saying. So when you go for a walk, it would be preferable to use music which has rhythm. You may dedicate some time listening to music which is very relaxing, slow tempo, very soft music, instrumental music when you may want to go to sleep or relaxing. But as I said, if you want to keep yourself, uh, give your brain an exercise, then keep some target. You may say, I will learn this shlokas, this set of shlokas or this set of prayers or this set of uh, songs in a month's time. Give yourself a target and see the change in yourself, how your memory improves, how your attention improves, what we call as RAM of your brain. Uh, computer, uh, RAM, we call it as working memory, improvement in that. All this has an impact on your well-being. So just to give a uh, take-home message in that sense, one, music is beyond entertainment, okay? It is undoubtedly, but it is definitely beyond that. 
music is a biologically based phenomenon that means it's hardcore in us we may not be trained in music but everybody has music in us like within us so everybody knows sense of rhythm everybody has sense of pitch uh, training of course helps it's on a continuum thirdly on one hand we are talking about well being mental well being positive mental health it has so many components to it and music has all this which can contribute to each of these aspect to it just to recapitulate cognitive health emotional health spiritual health our social health you know social well being that is also very very important so and the, another thing i said use it or lose it so if you don't use some of your skills you tend to lose it and i will another thing i want to say i may be passionate about music i may be passionate about neuroscience but being a neuropsychologist i can tell you that our brain requires different types of diet only music i will not recommend only one thing no it has to be a right balance of various activities that you do in your daily routine activity so if you have some physical activity yoga walking that's important you have music as one of the component it's important so like that like how you would want to have a, we don't like to eat mosranna every day or saranna every day we want different diet balanced diet same thing for our brain our brain requires different kind of activity engagement so if many of you may be retired engineers many of you may be retired teachers you may have different professions keep that active keep that knowledge active and wherever as i said wherever music can play a role think of it how it can be used and in your routine activity as well so yeah i hope these messages were useful uh, for all of you and see music from a different perspective I would be happy to take questions or answer questions. Before that, why I have not thought it was useful or not? It was very much useful, ma. In fact, we have understood many things, some many many new things. Yes, music is biological. Yes, we know that because right from our birth, our mothers used to just, I mean, make us sleep by singing. Therefore, even at that time when we cannot understand any other thing, we have understood music. Yes. So yes. music is absolutely there is no no doubt that music and your entire talk was like music. I should also say that. It, I mean, <laughs> it was not different from music in the sense that yes, every point you have been making very clearly and very I mean, at a, it has gone into many of in, in, into all our minds. I am very sure that it is very very useful to us. Now the floor is open for people to ask questions. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Anybody like to? Rajan, madam. Rajan, madam, you can unmute and speak. Uh, sir, uh, can I have this uh, one? Uh, what is that? Out of mind, out of out of sight, and out of mind. Yes, sir. I think doctor, I think doctor can explain much better than out yeah. of sight, out of mind. Yes, sir. Yes, same thing happens with the brain. So the beauty I which I wanted to highlight. Thanks for Jamunathan sir bringing that. Imagine we learnt uh, math tables in sing song way, some rhymes in sing song way that we'll never forget. In fact, so what we learn through music basically engages a strong pathways in the brain, which is structurally such a strong one. which is what what we call as prophylaxis for neurodegeneration it it is like a protective mechanism that is why i think in the olden days young kids were asked to learn so many shlokas by heart not uh, you know like uh, reading writing by heart learning it over and over and over and over again because that impressions that the memory system when they are engaged it's like uh, childhood friendships i go back to the same example even if you have lost touch for some many years then you meet that person your connection is so strong in no time you'll be like you know saying oh my god i have met my old friend i know so well that continues so same thing happens with the brain so what we learn at the critical years like 3 to 5 years 
10 to 11 years is when the brain pruning happens. We are born with more number of neurons in the brain. We, the brain, the nature kind of uh, trickles it down, saying I'll, like gardener, no, like uh, they want to shape it. That same thing happens. So what stimulation, what impressions, what kind of sensory stimulation the child gets at that critical period is extremely important. And that lasts long. It's like prophylaxis for neurodegeneration. So we we don't use it, we lose it. I want to say that that's like a favorite mantra for today, maybe. <laughs> yeah. uh, is it that Gayatri mantra is very associated, associated with this stuff? Uh, I, I, one of the activities of the brain? Sir, it is not just, of course, Gayatri mantra is considered as the most powerful one in our Indian tradition. Uh, I with respect with that. In fact, I would say that we should not even listen to some of the sing-song way of Gayatri Mantra. If you go by the hardcore tradition, you have to sing it with the same Udatta, Anudatta, that Swarita, uh, and not use that uh, you know song like Gayatri Mantra. No. And some neuroscientific studies, systematic studies have been done in our own center also. Gayatri Mantra has been studied. It actually helps in deactivating the limbic system. That means high arousability is kind of balanced and your rational brain is activated. So your areas of the brain that is important for rational thinking is kind of exercised and unnecessary arousable, arousability that we talk about, no, the emo limbic system, deactivation of that happens, amygdala activity. So, so that, means that, uh, uh, number of uh, rec recitation of Vaitra Mantra should be reduced or uh, to a limited uh, extent is desired. So I would I am I am not the expert to say do it this many times or no, sir. I would be very wrong if I say that. What I would say is whether it is Gayatri Mantra or what, you should always aim to learn something new, is what I can tell you as a take-home message. You may know, know something. Okay, what you know, you can continue to do. That will become part of your routine work. Can you give challenges to your brain? Give something new to your brain. If you already know Gayatri Mantra and you're doing it very regularly, then I think that is where you know, we just go beyond just um, uh, recitation uh, in terms of uh, word. Word recitation is not important. It is important to do dhyana on that after that. Meditation, what we say. Go beyond that. That's where the spiritual realm comes in. Even in music. Once we learn the songs, once we learn the compositions, what differentiates good musicians like you, where you experience the audience experiences, the spiritual aha experiences when the musician has lost sense of self while singing. They go into that creative limb, altered states of consciousness is what we say. That is different. So from my, uh, from as a take home message for today's lecture, if I were to say, if you know something, continue to do, but Give some new, new, new exercise to your brain, and that can be in the form of music also. Definitely, definitely, yeah. because as I said, music is one of the most powerful way in which you can keep your brain fit. Yes. Because as I said, so many components, right? You tala is there, pitch is there, memory is there. It engages your um, emotion, motor pathway, releasing neurotransmitters, which has so much of health component benefits, reducing cortisol, that means reducing the stress hormones, increasing the neurotransmitters, which enhances connection, oxytocin, empathy. So whatever that is good is definitely happens through music. And I, I want to put a disclaimer, there can be some music which is which can have negative impact. Research has to take care of that because it's just like diet. Too much of anything can is also not advised, right? Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. To have balance. Yeah. That's really helps. So too much of anything is not good. That <laughs> even yeah, yeah, yeah. That is a very good, madam. See, uh, rather, madam, would you like to say anything, madam? Hello, Garu. You are really wonderful. Yeah. I was wondering why you are finishing it. <laughs> <laughs> so much, so much. You have spoken about so many things. And I'm really, I, I'm really appreciating the way you have said this. Congratulations. You have given so many information. Yes, I'm, I know you, I'm, I'm always a student. <laughs> always I say, whatever, what I had done, it's a different thing. And it's, uh, as you have said, 
uh, Gayatri Mantra. This came to me, the question also, when I was having the international conference. They said that Gayatri Mantra is so uh, powerful chant. And uh, when we are also saying, why it's not, I mean, we are not seeing anything. I said, everything has got a particular way of, you know, saying, even the chant, as you're saying, the chandas, the Bijaman, everything has got a specific way of charan, what you say, the way it has pronounced and it has how much pressure we give in a particular uh, way, what we say, the mantras, it has an impact on our body. You beautifully explained, Shantala. Wonderful. <laughs> it was amazing. I must say, I'm very thankful to Jambunathan that he has uh, shared the Zoom link and which I shared with my students and I can see some of my students here. Oh, Rajini, Peter, Siddhi, Krishnamurti, they're all under training. They're taking training from me for music therapy and really great pleasure to listen to you. Mm -hmm. I hope again and again I will somewhere click yeah. I mean, I get the So option. kind of you, madam. So kind of you. Nantala. I think Very the nice. point you mentioned was so important that uh, one is mantras. We have to be very careful. Yes. That is why I think our uh, Indian tradition has given us uh, other methods also, like shlokas, songs, yes. uh, or compositions which are less stringent that way. Yes, and yes. Anybody can learn, even if you are, do not have, no, yeah. you know, you don't have to be so. It's a fact, even I used to say that even the baby nursery rhymes, they yes. are so healing. I yes. mean, even elders, as we sometimes, we just want to feel the child in us which is right. a very wonderful phase of our life so we want to go when we are as you are saying especially senior citizens like us when we want to have something you know pleasurable very happy moment we want to feel suddenly just to sing the nursery rhymes as we want <laughs> it really yeah. gives a wonderful pleasure and it's like you know charging the phone is going dead and we suddenly get charged so as you are saying it's all any form of any form of music, whether it's a rhyme, whether it is film song, whether it's only what we say, la 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 to our mind, is it's a healing. It's yeah. for healing purpose. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, Shantala. <laughs> Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other want to take and say any other things, sir? Madam. Otherwise, it's from Bang Shuguru from Bangalore. Actually, <laughs> I, thought just, I came here just to know what you are going to talk about the music for one hour. The rail is to be frank, enthralled, totally engrossed. <laughs> like just I did not leave my seat even for a minute. Just so much of information, so much of knowledge. Thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hope you Hello. Yeah, please, sir. Please go ahead. I have no question as such, but if I have to... Uh, say something about music experience. In one word, I can say it is music is bliss. The enjoyment that we get by, by listening to music or singing ourselves is beyond everything. Yes. That's what I wanted. So nice. Thank you. See, it's very great to get to, I mean, this kind of feedback from very experienced senior citizens. Manjurath is a quite a uh, senior citizen, so it's very good. But one thing is that, okay, I mean, Madam mentioned that we senior citizens. I don't say that Shantala is a senior citizen. <laughs> Sir, I said we are all in that continuum. <laughs> the yeah. moment we are born, we are aging. <laughs> it's true. So I feel that, you know, we should not have any barrier. I feel personally that age should not be a barrier, sir. Exactly. You should only think of health and as sir mentioned, no, when you're listening to music, the bliss. I think every moment, if we increase the moments of that blissful state in our life, I think then we are reaching talking about well-being, that sense. So you should we aim to, to have more blissful moments in our life, whatever we do. That's why I said music can aid, can be so helpful in that. Yes, we sir. just need to we use it very to. consciously how we can use it. We don't feel lonely with when we are listening to music. Yes. Yes. That's good. That's good. Yes, uh, can we close now? Since already we have, we have washed out the timing. So, thank you, Dr. Shantala. It's very, very nice of you to have responded to our uh, I mean, request. 
and share with us all our knowledge. So I should say that we have learned many, many new things today. So thanks to you for that. May God bless you. And you know, and uh, see, these are all days of return gifts. What is the return gift that we can give you? See, we only pray God to shower on you and your family. All of us are the best in life. Done. That is our return gift to you. May God bless you. Thank you. Return, thank you return, return, gift to, return gift, what we can give is, and whatever she said, let us follow it. Let us yeah, okay, follow it our life. That will be the return gift. So, okay, that is the practice. Now, I have to also give something to her. So we like to give her something. So that is the only gift that we can think of is the prayer to God to bless her with all of that so that she continues to educate people like us. Thank you. People are benefited by, by her work there. I mean, kind words and her knowledge and her ability to share this very freely. Because today, in today's context, people are not willing to share knowledge. So this is one, I mean, very specific case where she was without any hesitation sharing all her knowledge. So thank you, my doctor. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you, Rajam Madam. Thank you, everyone, for this wonderful. So, but I would also thank Rajam Madam for attending this. So she is a very senior uh, musician. To talk about Rajam Madam, she is a very senior musician. She herself is a the therapist, music therapist, and she, I mean, uh, actually, she does uh, music therapy lessons, and uh, I mean, uh, many patients are cured by her. That is the. She, herself, she herself is an institution, sir. Ah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Good, good night, all. Good evening. May God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.